You just can't quit, can you? Can't let things go? <laughs> Don't worry, neither can I. You see, the human brain hates leaving things unfinished, leaving questions unanswered. It goes directly against our nature. When faced with anything unexplained, we're programmed to want to find that explanation. And when we can't find that explanation, <sighs> it drives us crazy. I know why you're here. You've read and reread these books over and over again, thinking that maybe there was something in there that you missed. You combed through the fan wiki and blog posts, hoping somebody else could fill in the pieces for you. And that brought you to me. You saw this video, and that nagging bit in the back of your brain that wants answers so bad lit up with a spark of hope, thinking that maybe I can finally help you put this whole thing to rest. And can I help you? Well, I've spent a ton of time researching this particular question. I know this stuff cold, I can promise you that much. But as for whether I can give you a satisfying answer, well, that I can't promise. I will give you an answer, but I don't necessarily know if you're going to like it. So let's return to a series of unfortunate events one more time to see if we can't pinpoint once and for all what exactly was inside the VFD Sugar Bowl. A series of unfortunate events is something I've covered extensively already. Click the card to see my previous video on it. And I've touched on the mystery of the Sugar Bowl before, but I've never made a serious attempt to answer this question until now. If you need a refresher, a series of unfortunate events tells the story of the Baudelaire orphans, as all kinds of terrible things happen to them. Along the way, they discover that their parents, and the majority of other adults in their lives, were part of a secret organization known as VFD, Volunteer Fire Department. VFD was once a unified organization, but some time ago, there was a schism, and two halves of VFD began to fight over some secret object that was hidden inside of a sugar bowl. The Baudelaire's get all wrapped up in the fight over the sugar bowl, which rages all the way through the second to last book in the series, where the majority of both sides of VFD are wiped out and the sugar bowl's location is lost. We spend all of this time reading about the sugar bowl and having characters tell us how important it is, and we never even find out why. It's infuriating. From a narrative perspective, it might seem like the series is betraying its audience. This is a setup without any payoff, but that's not really accurate. It's critical to the story that the Sugar Bowl is never explained. For one, it's one of those mysteries that had been built up so much that no answer would be satisfying. For another, the lack of closure is, I think, what gave these books their staying power. As David Lynch once said, as soon as a story has a sense of closure, it gives you an excuse to forget you've seen the darn thing. You and I are still thinking about this story years later. The lack of answers is what makes these books so unforgettable. And if I could wax poetic for a moment, that's kind of the whole point. The whole story is about how the world is a terrible, cold, unforgiving place. You can try your hardest to do good all the time, but as the Baudelaire children grow up, they learn that the adult world isn't so simple. The right thing to do isn't always so obvious. Conflicts between people have been raging long before you were born, and will continue long after you're gone containing impossible complexities that you can never hope to fully understand. Most stories have closure, where everything is neatly wrapped up at the end. But as Lemony Stickett so often reminds us, this is not a typical story. Just like the real world, there is no closure here. That's why the Sugar Bowl is never explained. It's a symbol for all our real world questions and problems that will never be solved. We shouldn't be complaining that the story doesn't give us the answers we thought we wanted. Instead, We'd all be much better off accepting that we will never truly know these answers and celebrate this unique, unconventional, beautifully tragic story. But that's not why you're here. You're here to find out what was in that sugar ball. Author's intent be damned. Pfft, thematic cohesion. Give me a break. I'm gonna find those answers and nobody can stop me. <sighs> so that said, this is your last chance to walk away. Ask yourself if you can be content with letting the mystery be. Because if you continue on with me, you'll only find frustration and disappointment. Still here? Alright, let's go. Oh, and one more thing before we begin. Those of you watching who have only seen the TV show might be very confused right now. Because in the show, they tell you what's in the sugar bowl. You said the sugar bowl could help us. What's, what's in the sugar bowl? Sugar. Sure. From a botanical hybrid, VFD developed to defend us against the mycelium. 
The thing is, this doesn't happen in the books. In the books, the Sugar Bowl is never explained. But the story of the TV show follows the plot of the books so closely. And Daniel Handler, the author of the books, helps write the show. So wouldn't that mean that this is the answer in the books too? That the show finally answered the book's question after all these years? I wish it were that simple. As much as I would love it to be true, this answer cannot be canon to the books. For reasons I'll explain in due time. My sisters and I were wondering... Wondering what? If we might use your library. To start, we need to gather information. Verify facts and details. I combed through every book in the series, including the spin-offs and any other relevant media, to compile everything we know about the Sugar Bowl. Once we have all the info laid out, then we can start checking out some theories and trying to find one single answer that fits with everything we know. Let's start by tracking the Sugar Bowl's location during the series. If you can believe it, the Sugar Bowl doesn't really show up in the story until Book 10, when it's brought to VFD headquarters in the Mortmain Mountains. When the fire starting side of the schism burns the headquarters down, a volunteer threw the Sugar Bowl out the window to save it, where it ran down the stricken stream. It then drifted out to sea and settled in or near the Gorgonian Grotto, where it was retrieved and sent to the Hotel de Numont. There's a whole chain of schemes by both sides to intercept it, where long story short, we're led to believe it was dropped into the laundry chute, but it was actually dropped in the pond outside the hotel. The only person who knew this was Dewey de Numont. When Dewey is killed, the location of the Sugar Bowl is permanently lost. But a quick throwaway line suggests that Lemony retrieved the Sugar Bowl from the pond outside and drove away with it posing as a taxi driver. Okay, now let's go through every time a character reveals any information at all about the Sugar Bowl. The first direct mention of the Sugar Bowl is in Book 8, where Lemony Snicket wonders to himself, was it absolutely necessary to steal that Sugar Bowl from Esme Squalor? So that tells us that before the series started, Esme had it, but Lemony stole it. However, as Esme says repeatedly, she believes it was Beatrice who stole it from her. But I want to steal from you! I want to steal from you the way Beatrice stole from me! This theft precipitated most of the conflict in the story. But crucially, it was not the start of the schism. The schism began way before this, back when Kit Snicket was four years old. The fight over the Sugar Bowl is just a continuation slash escalation of that conflict. In Book 10, Lemony says in a letter to his sister that he's headed to the Hotel de Numont to recover evidence that will exonerate him of the arsons he was accused of and prove that Count Olaf was guilty instead. He then goes on to say that her suggestion that a tea set would be a handy place to hide anything important and small in the event of a dark day has turned out to be correct. In Book 11, Captain Wittershins is determined to find the Sugar Bowl, but he won't tell anybody why it's so important because apparently, quote, people have been destroyed for knowing such enormous secrets and there are secrets in this world too terrible for young people to know. It's fine. I'm not at all bitter that we spent a whole book with this guy and he never explained what he knew. When you write an extended mystery, you always have to have at least one character who knows all the answers but won't reveal what information they know because of reasons. Oh, but Wittershins does specify that it's not the Sugar Bowl itself that's so important. It's what's inside it. Both Wittershins and Olaf mention repeatedly that if the fire starting side of the schism got the Sugar Bowl, it would allow that side to finally emerge victorious over the fire fighting side although they're very light on specifics. Kit and Dewey both say that if their enemies got a hold of the Sugar Bowl, it would be the worst thing that could happen, except if they got their hands on the deadly fungus Medusoid Mycelium. Dewey and Jerome Squalor both say that Count Olaf wouldn't dare release the Medusoid Mycelium unless he also had the Sugar Bowl. Although that's not really accurate, since Olaf is later perfectly willing to release the Mycelium anyway, even without the Sugar Bowl. Esme gives us maybe the most specific description of what's inside when she says that it was really difficult to find a container that could hold it safely, securely, and attractively, and that it means something specific to the Baudelaire's and the Snickets. The Sugar Bowl is given the most focus in books 10 through 12, but we get one more big clue in the final book, the end. The Baudelaire's wash up on an island and learn that their parents had once lived there. They discover that their parents had created a botanical hybrid apple tree that was infused with horseradish. Horseradish being the only cure for the Medusoid Mycelium. They read in their parents' journal that their mother, Beatrice, hid a sample of the hybrid in a vess. They're interrupted before they can finish reading, but it's implied that the rest of the phrase was vessel for disaccharides, the official VFD term for Sugar Bowl. That's every key detail in the main series books, but we can also find some big clues in Lemony Snicket, the unauthorized autobiography. In a transcript of a VFD meeting, the VFD member known only as R expresses worry that all the secrecy and hiding they have to do might disrupt the training of newer members, and she says that the Sugar Bowl secret might slip their minds. Also, another chapter has a list of items in a VFD disguise kit, 
And right at the end, it says, Optional Materials, Sugar Bowl. In the prequel series, All the Wrong Questions, a young Lemony conspires with his friends to steal something from the higher-ups at VFD, but we're never told what it is. The second book has this illustration of Kit running away holding something that might be a sugar bowl. And finally, I also have to include any statements that the author has made in real life. Daniel Handler, Lemony Snicket, has repeatedly stated that what's in the sugar bowl is what's usually in a sugar bowl. You're skadiddly do right, moldy oldies. But lucky for you cats, I'm a peachy detective with a face for TV, and I've already cracked this popsicle case. That is every time the sugar bowl is brought up directly in the story. For such an important item to the plot, we know insanely little about it. We just have this small handful of facts. And most of them aren't even facts. They're just people talking around the idea of the sugar bowl and indirectly implying certain things about it. But let's see if we can get a working theory using the information we have. And there's no better place to start than with a TV show answer. Theory number one, the sugar bowl contained a cure for the medusoid mycelium, a sample of the horseradish apple tree hybrid created by the Baudelaire parents. If you ate an apple grown from this tree, you'd become immune. Points in favor? The sugar bowl and the mycelium are constantly described as a pair, two sides of the same coin. Olaf wouldn't dare release the mycelium unless he also had the sugar bowl. With both the disease and the cure, you could rule the world. But much more importantly, it says right here that Beatrice put a horseradish apple hybrid sample in a vessel for disaccharides. Is that not confirmation right there in the final book of the series? And the show literally told us that's what the answer was. Of course this is the answer. How is this not the answer? I wish, I wish it were that simple, but it just isn't. The main reason usually given to debunk this theory is the timeline. Put simply, the hybrid tree can't be what's in the sugar bowl because the fight over the sugar bowl is older than the hybrid tree. Beatrice created the hybrid tree while she was on the island, after she was married to Bertrand and while she was pregnant with Violet. That is long, long after she and Lemony conspired to steal the sugar bowl from Esme Squalor, while she and Lemony were still engaged. The whole reason she went to the island in the first place was to get away from all the fighting that broke out because of her stealing the sugar bowl. This was the explanation I gave in my original video, when I was young and naive and didn't know any better. I've seen this theory brought up and shot down so many times on all kinds of online forums, with people saying over and over that the timeline doesn't fit. So in my own research, I set out to understand the timeline better, so I could definitively prove that the theft of the sugar bowl came before the hybrid tree. But here's the thing. I couldn't. The timeline is so hazy. Nothing in the story is ever dated, and everything that happened in the story before the Baudelaire's were born feels like it exists all at the same time in a big timeline soup. Does it make a lot of sense for the sugar bowl theft to come before Beatrice went to the island? Yeah. Can I be 100% sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that it didn't come after? No. It's improbable, but possible, that Beatrice created the hybrid, left the island, gave birth to Violet, gave the sugar bowl to Esme, and then stole it back with the help of her old flame, Lemony. A funny thing happens whenever you try to prove anything about this series. These books have an amazing ability to make you feel like you understand what's going on, as long as you're not thinking too hard about it. If you're just focusing on one or two details at a time, you can tell yourself that everything makes perfect sense. But as soon as you narrow in on specifics, you'll find new information that contradicts what you thought you knew. Like this. You read the last book for the first time, and you see that line about Beatrice putting something in a vessel, and you think, oh, obviously that's meant to imply that the sugar bowl contained a horseradish apple hybrid. Then you do some more digging and you go, wait, didn't the fight over the sugar bowl happen before all this? And you realize your initial assumption was wrong. Then you dig even deeper, and you go, everything points to the sugar bowl theft happening first, but nothing ever outright confirms that. The longer you think about any one fact, the more likely you are to find a reason to doubt that fact. It makes questions like these hard to talk about, let alone solve. So, does that mean that the original theory was right? That the sugar bowl did contain a sample of the hybrid tree? Uh, still no. Besides the timeline stuff, the sugar bowl having a cure for the mycelium doesn't match up with any of the other clues we have. What about Lemony saying it contains something to exonerate him for arson crimes? What about Wittershins being too scared to tell the kids what's inside? What about Esme describing how only the sugar bowl could contain this specific item? This isn't as clean of an answer as you might think. But then why did the story mention Beatrice hiding the hybrid in a vessel? How can that possibly mean anything else? Well, there are a few ways to explain this. The simplest answer is that this is a misdirect, a red herring, some trolling by Daniel Handler. 
The full phrase, vessel for disaccharides, is cut off, leaving room for this to be talking about another kind of vessel entirely. But most likely, this is just another sugar bowl. That's another thing about this mystery that makes things even more confusing. There are multiple sugar bowls appearing throughout VFD's history besides the main one. Remember, a sugar bowl is included in the VFD disguise kit. It seems like VFD members use sugar bowls to transport objects in secret. Maybe that's what Beatrice was doing here. Or, this could still be talking about the original sugar bowl, and Beatrice put the hybrid inside after stealing it. But even if that was the case, the sugar bowl was still important and valuable before then. So, no, the horseradish apple theory isn't the answer. If you want a more thorough debunking of this theory, I've linked a blog post by Snicket Sleuth, who's kind of the theorist for these books. But for now, I need to move on. Theory number two. The Sugar Bowl contains an audio recording device and recorded evidence that proves that Count Olaf committed the arson crimes Lemony was framed for. Points in favor. The fact that Sugar Bowls are listed as an optional part of the VFD disguise kit. The thought is that members of VFD would use Sugar Bowls to hide bugs to record conversations when meeting someone for a meal. How else would a Sugar Bowl be useful in a disguise kit? We're told that before Beatrice stole the Sugar Bowl from Esme, the two of them met for tea at least once. Esme could have spilled the beans about Olaf's plans and was unknowingly recorded. And of course, there's that line from Lemony about hiding evidence in a tea set. In writings from Lemony after the series is over, after he got the Sugar Bowl, it seems like he's no longer on the run. So maybe he used the evidence recovered from the Sugar Bowl to clear his name. It lines up pretty well. Except this evidence is all pretty circumstantial. There's no proof that this is true, it's mostly just a guess that it could be true. That line from Lemony about the tea set, to me, feels very similar to the one about Beatrice and the vessel. The book is being coy and intentionally not saying the phrase Sugar Bowl. Once again, it's easy to assume you knew what he was talking about, but there's no way to prove it. It leaves room for the possibility that Lemony was talking about a different Sugar Bowl, or even some other part of a tea set. By the way, there's already an object in the story that serves a similar purpose, the Snicket File. Unlike the Sugar Bowl, we're told explicitly that the Snicket File has the evidence needed to put Count Olaf in jail. But people care way less about the Snicket File. It was important, but nobody was killed over it. If the Sugar Bowl also had this evidence, then the two items would be treated as equally valuable, but they aren't. It's also worth noting that Count Olaf doesn't care about the Sugar Bowl that much. He repeatedly makes it clear that the Baudelaire fortune is his main priority. If the Sugar Bowl had evidence against him, then he should care about it the most. I guess it's still possible that the Sugar Bowl contained an audio recording of some other important conversation, but there's no strong evidence for that. It's just a guess, so I'm going to have to reject this theory too. I'm also going to reject another similar theory for the same reasons, that the Sugar Bowl contained the poison darts that killed Count Olaf's father. Again, if this was the case, Olaf should care more. That brings us to theory number three. The Sugar Bowl contains the Bominating Beast statue. Okay, this one definitely requires some explanation. So the plot of the All the Wrong Questions series revolves around the Bominating Beast, a giant sea monster that can be controlled with a little statue of it. Maybe this is the big important thing everyone is fighting over. Points in favor. I mean, sure, I can see why so many people would want their hands on a kaiju summoner, but other than that, there's no direct evidence to support this. There's not a single detail that links the statue to the Sugar Bowl in any way. Besides, how lame would it be if the answer to this huge question was something never introduced in the original series? It's a nice idea, but there's really not that much to it. Three theories up, three theories down. Nothing fits. You know, besides the evidence against each of these theories that I've already said, I also need to point out that none of these objects feel important enough. We keep hearing that the Sugar Bowl is so valuable, but it's hard to conceive of any one thing that so many people would want. Like, if the Sugar Bowl contained a cure for the Medusoid Mycelium, who cares? Just use horseradish, it's everywhere! Plus, several characters who were after the Sugar Bowl expressed surprise that the Medusoid Mycelium was even still around. If the Sugar Bowl contained evidence to clear Lemony and implicate Olaf, are either of those characters so important in the grand scheme that everyone would risk their lives for their personal drama? And again, the Stick and File also exists and can do the same thing. And in the All the Wrong Questions series, nobody cares much about the Abominating Beast besides Lemony and the people in town whom we never hear about anywhere else. All these answers, besides not fitting for logical reasons, feel pretty underwhelming. Can there even be one singular thing that all these characters care about? This is ridiculous. Once you disprove the most obvious answers, you're left with nothing. There's virtually zero information to go on. Remember what I said a minute ago about how this series can feel like it makes sense when you're not digging too deep, but as soon as you start digging deep, you find that you know even less than you thought? Well, look at what we found so far. We've collected every relevant mention of the Sugar Bowl, and in every single one, somebody says something like, the Sugar Bowl is important. I want it. Everyone wants it. My enemies can't have it. 
but they don't give any details whatsoever as to why. And in the only two instances of somebody giving more detail, Lemony talking about clues to clear his name and Beatrice putting the hybrid sample inside, it turns out that these moments don't even mention the sugar bowl directly, so we can't even be sure that's what they're talking about. I can come up with theory after theory, but there's no proof of any of them. We have nothing. There is nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Theory number four. The sugar bowl contains nothing. It's empty. There's nothing valuable inside at all. And everyone in VFD is just fighting over nothing. Okay, I frame that as a big reveal, but this isn't a new idea. In fact, after the hybrid apple theory, it's easily the most popular answer. But doesn't it just feel right? The Sugar Bowl secret had been built up so much that no answer would ever be satisfying. And like I already mentioned, the Sugar Bowl plotline is symbolic of a lack of closure, and how in the adult world, messy, complicated fights can all start over the stupidest things. From a narrative standpoint, the Sugar Bowl is a MacGuffin, meant to advance the plot, and the fact that people want it is way more important to the story than what's inside it. Just like the archetypal MacGuffin, the Maltese Falcon, it's something that everyone fights over but turns out to be totally meaningless. For the record, this is the theory that I believe in. The Sugar Bowl is empty. Or to be more specific, the Sugar Bowl just has sugar. It's just like Daniel Handler said, what's in the Sugar Bowl is what's usually in a Sugar Bowl. At this point, I'll turn your attention back to Snicket Sleuth, who as usual, has the most thorough Sugar Bowl theory out there. They also assert that the Sugar Bowl is empty. I'll link their post below, but to summarize their theory, VFD used to train their apprentices by telling them that the organization owned a really amazing object hidden inside of a Sugar Bowl. In reality, there was nothing special about the Sugar Bowl, and it was all a distraction to keep them from prying into any other important secrets before they were ready. Eventually, the apprentices would be told the truth, of course. But when the schism happened, all of VFD started guarding their secrets a lot more closely, and a bunch of apprentices were never told that the Sugar Bowl was empty. So an entire generation of VFD grew up thinking that it was genuinely valuable. Throughout the series, anyone who claims to know what's in the Sugar Bowl either knows it's empty and is trying to mislead someone else, or they're pretending to know what's inside to save face. Lemony, Beatrice, and their associates did eventually discover that the Sugar Bowl was worthless. They then used the Sugar Bowl as bait for Count Olaf on the fire starting side, to manipulate them into committing crimes to find it, allowing Lemony to collect evidence against them. It didn't work, and Lemony ended up framed for those crimes instead. When the series came to a head at the Hotel de Numont, both sides essentially destroyed each other, while Lemony took the Sugar Bowl and disappeared into obscurity. And that's it. That's our answer. Huh? What's that? You're still not satisfied, are you? Well, me neither. Stick and Sleuth theory is compelling, cool, and fits pretty well thematically. But it still just feels like a theory, you know? You and I, we're not content with just theories. We're waiting for the aha moment. We're trying to find that answer that feels so obviously definitely true that you feel silly for not thinking of it before, like the answer to a riddle. I definitely believe that the sugar bowl contains sugar and nothing else. I mean, how could it not? No other answer makes sense, and no other answer would be satisfying. But even if we say that's definitely the answer, there are still a lot of other questions surrounding it that need answering. And while I do like the broad strokes of Snake and Sleuth theory, it relies on a lot of speculation when filling in more specific details. Is there any hard evidence to suggest that VFD made up a Sugar Bowl mystery for their apprentices? Not really. It all hinges on the fact that it seems like something they might do, and the plotline from All the Wrong Questions where Young Lemony and Kit conspire to steal an unknown object from VFD. Which is yet another example of something that could be the Sugar Bowl, but is never confirmed. Besides all this speculation, there are three things that make this theory not sit right with me. The first is that it doesn't really account for the fact that there are multiple Sugar Bowls. VFD used vessels for disaccharides as part of their disguise kits. That doesn't fit nicely with the idea of one single all-important sugar bowl. Second, Esme. Over and over, I keep coming back to her monologue about the sugar bowl in book 12. I'll read the whole thing to you here so you can really see what I mean. <clears throat> then you know all about the sugar bowl and what's inside. You know how important the thing was, and how many lives were lost in the quest to find it. You know how difficult it was to find a container that could hold it, safely, securely, and attractively. You know what it means to the Baudelaire's, and what it means to the Stickets. And you know that it is mine. In the Netflix show, Esme just wants the Sugar Bowl because it completes her tea set. She just wants to get back what's hers. But in the books, this monologue tells a different story. It sure sounds like Esme has a specific thing in mind that she's describing. She seems to know for sure exactly what's inside. 
You could say that Esme is just an idiot who doesn't know what she's talking about, but that feels like a cop-out to me. Especially since Esme is one of the only characters whom we know owned the Sugar Bowl. While it was in her possession, there's no way she didn't open it and look inside, right? Nothing about this moment jives well with the Sugar Bowl being empty. That leads directly into my third objection. Stick It Sleuth says that everyone either knows it's empty, or is pretending to know what's inside. But I have a hard time swallowing that. There are too many examples of characters behaving as if they have something specific in mind. The fact remains that even if the Sugar Bowl is empty, you also have to ask what all the other characters think is in the Sugar Bowl, because that's just as important. Sure, there are some characters who are only after the Sugar Bowl because the people around them say it's valuable, even if they don't know why. The Baudelaire orphans are in that exact position for most of the story. But I can't accept the idea that this applies to everybody. There are too many people who give too strong an impression that they know what they're chasing after. So I thought for a long time, and as I thought, I kept coming back to this detail about Sugar Bowls being part of the VFD Disguise Kit. Besides the main Sugar Bowl, there are multiple Sugar Bowls around. That's just a fact. Members of VFD frequently reference the idea of using Sugar Bowls or having them. But what do they use them for? And also, why would Daniel Handler include this in the story? It would be way simpler to just put one Sugar Bowl in the narrative. This muddies the waters to an almost cruel degree. This allowed him to tease the audience with an answer by having Beatrice put the hybrid apple in a vessel, without it necessarily being THE vessel. Why do this? What's the point? Well, I think I can answer the first question. The reason why VFD members use sugar bowls. They're a general purpose hiding place. When you're meeting someone, for tea or whatnot, and you have an object you don't want them to see, it's useful to have a container with you to throw it inside. It's not perfect, since somebody could always decide they want sugar in their tea and open it up, this is probably where the VFD tradition of never taking your tea with sugar came from. As they always say, tea should be as bitter as wormwood and as sharp as a two-edged sword. I am very confident that this is the case. I've mentioned the line from R about the Sugar Bowl secret slipping the minds of newer recruits, but let's look at that full quote. The Sugar Bowl secret is listed alongside two other methods that VFD uses to pass along coded messages. And the line right after the Sugar Bowl secret says, this could lead to grave misunderstandings during coded communication and we can't afford that. No mention of the Sugar Bowl's value. Her only concern is with communication. So clearly, members of VFD use Sugar Bowls to communicate with each other in secret in some way. The most logical explanation is that they hide things in Sugar Bowls. Messages, important objects, hidden microphones, what have you. And pass them between each other. So there are probably tons of Sugar Bowls out there with all kinds of different important items inside. Wait. Hold on. That's it. That, that has to be it, right? Okay, after much deliberation, here's my theory. The Sugar Bowl, the main one, is one of many VFT Sugar Bowls designed for transporting secret objects. This particular Sugar Bowl has nothing important inside, just sugar. But due to a massive web of misunderstandings, everyone else thinks they know what's inside, and they all think it's something different. Let me explain. I've already established that there were lots of Sugar Bowls floating around carrying important things in the early days of VFD. But as the series kept emphasizing, there were tons of miscommunications after the schism. VFD members refused to share secrets, even to their most trusted colleagues or apprentices, because they weren't sure who in the organization was a friend and who was an enemy. This forced members to rely on partial information and guesswork. Whereas back in the day, one member might just show another what they were carrying in their Sugar Bowl, now you might be surrounded by people who all have Sugar Bowls and won't tell you what's inside. Beatrice and Lemony stole one such Sugar Bowl from Esme. We don't know why or how, but word of this event trickled out to members on both sides of VFD, and every person reached a different conclusion about what was inside based on the incomplete information they had. Like the fable of the blind man and the elephant, nobody had the whole picture. All that probably sounds like a big reach, but the fact remains that the information we get from different characters about the Sugar Bowl cannot all coexist in the same explanation. There is no one thing that could exonerate Lemony, and help one side of the schism destroy the other, and function in tandem with Mycelium, and be too dangerous a secret for children to know, and can only be contained by a fragile ceramic bowl. The only way this all makes sense is if these characters all believe a different object is inside. The thing that got me thinking down this path is the running gag in the last book, where characters keep telling stories about their past, and the butlers keep expecting the story to link up with something from their story but it turns out that this story is completely unrelated. Ishmael will mention a man with one eyebrow, and the kids will be like, Count Olaf? And he'll say, Uh, no. I was talking about a totally different guy with one eyebrow. 
There's this idea running through the whole series that the world is messy. Things don't all tie together like they do in a story. There are countless people out there with countless stories just as complex as this one, some of which intersect, some of which don't. All of these characters think that the Sugar Bowl is part of their story, but not all of them are right. The Baudelaire's came into this whole mess of a conflict late in the game, and while they scramble to catch up, it's easy to assume that all the other adults have all the answers. But as the story keeps hinting at, adults don't always know everything. Some characters believe that the Sugar Bowl has evidence to exonerate Lemony. Some characters believe it has the cure for the Medusoid Mycelium. Some characters believe it has something completely different that we would never even think of because they're working with a totally different set of facts. Some characters know the Sugar Bowl just has plain old sugar, but they pretend to think it's something important to manipulate others. And lots of characters, like the Baudelaire's, have no clue what's inside and are just bluffing their way through everything. But the famous Sugar Bowl that so many have fought and died to protect was completely and totally worthless. So that's it then. I've solved it. This is the answer. No, I'm not sure. There was still like a million leaps in logic in there. It's still just a theory cobbled together from a lot of guesswork. And it still doesn't explain everything. Like if this is true, I still have no clue who believes what about the Sugar Bowl. Especially Esme, who really should know what was inside more than anyone else. Like I keep saying, you can't prove anything about these books. Every fact we're given is phrased with just enough doubt that we can't say for sure that we know how it fits in. I like this explanation better than any of the other ones I've found so far, but it still doesn't feel perfect. There was still no aha moment. I haven't even mentioned the fact that Daniel Handler has said that fans have written to him with the correct answer of what's inside, but only about one person per year gets it right. Which first of all, I call shenanigans. If the Sugar Bowl mystery had a clear correct answer, the internet hive mind would have cracked it by now. The numbers should reflect either lots of people getting it right, or nobody getting it right. One person per year is crazy. A statistical absurdity. But second, <sighs> Mr. Handler, that's gotta be the cruelest thing you could have possibly said about this. Because it basically makes every fan theory a non-starter. Every answer someone could come up with is either way too simple and common, or in the case of my theory, way too obscure and specific. This is yet another piece of information that makes you feel like you don't know anything. I'm just a big dumb idiot who can't figure out a children's book. The Sugar Bowl has an answer. Or maybe it doesn't. Who am I to say? Never mind that literally the only thing I ever do is try to figure out how stories work. I'm never gonna get closure, am I? I'm just gonna sit here in this stupid room surrounded by empty white walls for the rest of time and try to figure out answers to questions that might not even have answers. <laughs> I can't do it, man. I can't. There's gotta be an answer. There's gotta be a safe way out. There's gotta... <sighs> the inner machinations of my mind are an enigma.